Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Patient Voice Amplified podcast. I'm Dan Check, alongside Adam Charrington. We're glad to be with you today. So, Adam, I understand we took a little bit of time to do some brief interviews on the show floor. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? It, it seemed like a great opportunity while we're at HIMSS. We've got a lot of vendor partners there, place full of providers. We thought, hey, let's 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 do several little mini episodes of the podcast. So, yeah, we've got several recordings we're going to share with the audience. So, well, let's jump right in and listen. Okay, this is our HIMSS podcast edition for the Patient Voice Amplified. I'm here with Aaron Meary from Baptist Health. Aaron, you just gave a great keynote at the opening session for the uh, Patient Experience Forum. Uh, talk about a couple of the highlights of wh why do we need to listen to patients more? Yeah, number one, do not be creepy with patient technology and data. I think that's the number one highlight, give people granular choice. Number two, listen, respect, engage, meaning listen to your patients, respect what they're asking you to do, and engage them, go do something. Make a difference in a life of somebody, and I promise you that's why we're all here in healthcare. Loved what you talked about on how you got a lot of patients activated quickly, and, and obviously you're on a new EHR and, that, and uh, using the portal. What else did your team do to really connect with patients early on? Yeah, partnership throughout the entire health system with all of our different teams from marketing, communications, uh, HR teams, listening to what people were asking us to and reacting quickly. Uh, we actually formed uh, many committees to be able to look at issues as they came in real time and resolve them, whether it's something that's a workflow, scheduling problem, template problem, whatever it may be. It's a lot of elbow grease and listening, but being able to react quickly. So a lot of weekends spent uh, reading through comments and soliciting feedback from our patients, but with a great team, you can get anywhere. Awesome. Really appreciate it. Always good to see you. Thanks, my friend. Thanks. I'm here with Greg O'Neill. Uh, he's the director of health education for Christiana Healthcare. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just uh, here at the HIMSS conference, and we just got out of a, a session uh, that really focused on being patient-centric. And uh, can you just kind of give us a summary of that meeting and, and how it went? I think what we walk away from this session with is uh, we heard a lot of stories from people who care what happens to people as they navigate healthcare. And uh, a common theme that came through that is if you want people to trust what you're doing, you have to be really clear with your communication. You have to provide uh, meaningful transparency so that folks can get the information that they really need and not too much information. Uh, actionable information, but in a way that they can understand. Um, it, it impacts, you know, every person that we care for. Uh, it impacts their their life. So we need to take it that seriously. We need to be implementing technology solutions that make it easier, uh, less time consuming, uh, less expensive, and that can really connect to people. I think there are other uh, modes of technology in society that. People have really found integrate well with their life, and we just need to find that you know, for healthcare. You had mentioned in the conference that there needs to be a better opportunity for patients to really understand with they, when they come out of a visit with a provider. What is it that is missing there when it comes to that? Well, we're doing a number of things at Christiana Care uh, to try and improve process. So our systems of care uh, really need to revolve around not only the quality of care, but the experience of care for someone uh, that, you know, regardless of what the touch point is that they're, uh, that they're experiencing with us. So uh, whether it's connecting them with the right technology so they have up-to-date information, whether it's skilling up our, our caregivers to uh, have uh, tools like Teachback at the ready so that they can be really learning in real time what someone's understanding is before they leave that encounter uh, of, of what their health situation is. So I think it's, it's a mixture of uh, systems thinking uh, and, and that kind of process improvement uh, along with the skills and abilities of your caregivers and then assessing if it's working uh, through some sort of feedback signal from the patients themselves. What, what's the last question for you here is if there are uh, companies out there that are trying to produce solutions that can help your systems, what would you tell them to focus on right now that would help? To me, the number one thing is consistency. Um, I think you know there's so much ex expansion in the tech space um, that, and, and so much desire to try to meet these needs that there may be a, an experience of technology churn for the patient. They may have you know several different modalities in which they're being reached out to. 
And I think what's really important for a particular health system is to be consistent, you know, find a few strategies that you really want to use and lean into those, use them consistently over a long period of time. And if people have a good experience with that and they let you know, uh, now you're starting to build trust with them. Perfect. Thank you so much, Greg. Appreciate it, bro. I am here with Julie Wolk, the Chief Marketing Officer for Carium. And Julie, how are you today? Oh, it couldn't be better, but I'm glad the snow stopped. <laughs> Thank you, Chicago, for making that stop. We, we appreciate it. We hope so. We hope so. Uh, Julie, talk about uh, your experience or expectations coming into HIMSS. What's top of mind for you? Well, I always love hymns, and it seems like I've been such a veteran that, you know, each year I'm always curious what the flavor and the conversation is going to be. And since we're sitting here at the Patient Experience Forum, it's really sitting here at 2023. We're post-pandemic. A lot of different technologies are coming in front of the patients. And what is their experience with it? And how is that in relationship with our health system partners? Um, And, you know, where are those gaps? Where is it connecting and doing really well? And where do we really need to lean into some opportunity? And so I'm just really here to listen and to understand better so I can take it back to our team. You said something really important to me um, where we're connecting technology with provider partners. What are some examples you've seen at Carium or just in general about that? Where is it working? Yeah, well, um, we were lucky enough to um, have Shannon Crotwell with Atrium Health, Sanger Heart and Vascular Institute to uh, say yes to joining us at the Patient Experience Forum. And she was on a panel earlier where they really did talk about um, how are they creating patient journeys that create results. For example, in their case, they're seeing 40% um, readmission reductions um, and one day reduction in length of stay. So how are they seeing all of these really great metrics, but they're not losing sight of the patient and they're still able to build patient trust within a technology environment. And so, you know, in using Carium within that workflow and that care journey, um, they've been able to do the best of both worlds. It was great to see her share that story, but also to hear the questions that came from that where people are still trying to figure out those pieces because they feel like they have, you know, siloed data. And, um, you know, how are they doing some of that idea sharing as systems? So any other thoughts of where we need to go next to include the patient more and make sure their voice is heard? Any other thoughts? Well, I think what you said is absolutely right. It's got to be voice. And I think a patient voice has to be there and it has to be an equitable voice, not one particular population. And I'd love to see that expand. Um, but also personally, something passion- that I'm passionate about is the care team voice, because we've heard so much about patient burnout. Um, we know there's workforce stressors as well. We can't have the patient voice at the sacrifice of the care team voice, and we can't do vice versa either. Um, and so really saying, how can we get better, making sure of listening to both voices, but also making sure that our healthcare organizations survive and thrive. Awesome. Thank you. Oh. Really appreciate the insights. Oh, thank you so much for having me and have a great time at Hims. I am here at Hims 23 in Chicago. We're overlooking Lake Michigan, and I have the pleasure to talk to Laura Cooley, the editor-in-chief for the Journal of Patient Experience. Laura, how are you? I'm great, Adam. Thanks for uh, engaging me in conversation. Oh, happy to talk with you. So you come into Hims. What's top of mind? What are What are you thinking about as you start this this journey? You know, I'm coming with the lens of my role with the Journal of Patient Experience, which is an open access publication where we focus on research and um, professional perspectives as well as patient voice perspectives on what's happening in healthcare experience world. And for me, we publish a lot of work around um, evidence-based practices, um, how can we improve patient experience? And I'm entering the HIMSS conversation really interested in one, what are we doing with all the data we're collecting? And how are we starting to integrate things? In patient experience, we're always looking at you know, surveys that are collected from vendor partners or things that we're filing into the CAPS survey program. But what are we doing with that data to meaningfully integrate with outcomes data from a clinical perspective? Um, what are our safety and quality colleagues doing and all of their data? And how are we connecting the dots so that we actually help patients and families have better outcomes. And I, I'm really interested to hear how some of the solutions here are or are not helping us leverage better experience. 
Have you heard anything today about patient voice? You mentioned that, and that's certainly a theme of this podcast. How do we listen to patients more? So I'm curious, any, any moments today that you want to speak about? Yeah, I think one thing that comes up for me, um, we heard a panel of patients, patient voice advocates, and they really dialed in on the idea that patients are not necessarily getting access to their own records, their own data, so to speak. Um, therefore, there could be a lot of errors in that data. And it you know, draws back to this point of how can my experience be enhanced as a patient or family member when the data on file may or may not be accurate or the data collected isn't necessarily integrated with other data points about me or about my care. And so so, you know, I think that patients have a right to have their data leveraged and to have access to that data. And, and that, that was really surfacing today. Awesome. I appreciate that, that insight. So tell our listeners what's coming up in the Journal of Patient Experience that we can look for. Yeah, well, right now we are collecting submissions for a special issue or collection of, of articles, and they're, they're rolling out already, on digital innovation and technology and how it's impacting patient and clinician experience. So we're looking for great article submissions and invite you and, and your listeners to share ideas. How do we find you if we have suggestions? Yeah, I would just Google Journal of Patient Experience, uh, and I'm also pretty easy to Google Laura Cooley and would love to connect to hear ideas. Awesome. Thanks, Laura. Good to see you. Hello, my name is Jen Munson, and we are here with Adidia Bansad with Luma Health. We're going to be asking some questions on what's top of mind at HIMSS this year in 2023. Aditya, we're so glad to meet with you. Excited to be here. Excited to be spending some time with our wonderful friends at class. Likewise. Well, the first question I have for you, what is top of mind coming into HIMSS? <laughs> HIMSS is so... HIMSS is so big, it's so uh, broad in its scope, and always every year that I come to HIMSS, there's uh, a couple things that are exciting or interesting to me. It, for me, just being a giant dork and a big nerd, I love coming in and seeing like the calf carts and the Pixis machines and all the other stuff that I have absolutely no business learning about, but just want to know about because I'm just like, want to know things about healthcare. Absolutely. But for me and my role at Lumen is we try to make patient success better and make patients more successful as they access healthcare. What's uh, been very interesting to me is both interop and in experience. How all the different uh, members of the healthcare IT ecosystem community are really pushing the ability to use interop both in the clinical but also in the operational sense um, and make it a more a uh, more liquid and more fluid uh, exchange of data across the entire ecosystem. And then on the second side is what is the experience that we're all trying to make available to patients across the ecosystem. Um, so what we're kind of seeing in a lot of the different things that I've been, uh, been having a chance to walk around the boots is what does the future of like the patient as a participant in their healthcare experience mm -hmm. and what are those experiences that vendors and solutions providers are actually pr uh, presenting there. So, you know, we're seeing obviously a lot of stuff about AI. I think a lot of people came to him saying like, and I think Hims themselves was like, healthcare plus AI, this is a year, and you know, ChatGPT makes that a big thing. But to me, the really purpose of that, and actually I think the bigger slide title on that topic is what is the experience we want to deliver to patients? Right. Thank you for that feedback. So what are you hearing about patient centricity? Yeah, I mean, exactly kind of that experience that we're looking to put uh, for patients. I mean, I think class has done such a wonderful job of elevating the voice of the patient in part of the entire discussion and dialogue. I think classically, we all kind of think as technology vendors and software solutions and ROI, and we really don't take an opportunity to put the voice of the patient, making the patient the center of that universe. And I think what we've seen here is um, a lot of new capabilities that make uh, patients more at the center of their dialogue. Last year, a little more so than this year, but you continue to see the thread pull through, is even in the patient's financial experience, and that's a lot of things that we pay attention to a lot at Luma, is the operational experience a patient has, the clinical experience a patient has, and the financial experience, can they be the center, and to use your expression, the centricity of it, can they be the center of those three things rather than relegated to a dialogue that happens in the back office? The more the patient gets pushed to the front of that dialogue, I think the better it is for both the clinical outcome, the, the healthcare outcome, but also just the happiness of the, of the employees that work inside the health system. Thank you so much. Next question is about what advice would you give our podcast audience about involving patients more in technology and healthcare? What would you say about that? Number one, read the class data about it because <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal. And so, I mean, honestly, and class has been done such a wonderful job about elevating um, elevating the patient's voice in the healthcare um, IT ecosystem. But what I think is important is, you know, you've got to go on site. 
right? If you're a vendor of technology, like go sit in that waiting room, right? It's not like something from a white castle, an abstract concept. Patients are like date lines of data inside like a database. There are actual people waiting inside of a waiting room who have tough conversations about their ability to pay, about their care plan. One of the, um, a clinic member I talked to maybe about half a year ago, she said the worst day for my staff is when a patient walks in un with an unexpected bill, an unexpected payment. And so what can we do to make that better? And I think if you don't sit in the clinic exam room or you sit in the clinic universe, you don't sit inside and soak in that environment, you don't really get the opportunity to put the patient in as a health technology uh, vendor, you don't get the opportunity to put the patient in that ecosystem. All right. Thank you so much for your great feedback. We're excited to meet with you. Thanks again. Yeah, have a great hems. You too. All right. Well, really want to thank our participants of this episode. Erin uh, Miri from Baptist Jacksonville, Julie Wolk from Carium, Aditya Bansud from Luma Health, uh, Laura Cooley from the Journal of Patient Experience, and Greg O'Neill from Christiana Healthcare. Uh, really fun to talk to these experts and and get their take on what they're hearing and how. Uh, we can include the patient more in in uh, patient engagement. Yeah, it was great of them to to take a couple minutes out of their busy schedules at that event. I, I, we have to give a shout out to Jacob Fulton and Jen Munson, our colleagues that helped do some of those interviews. So Jacob and Jen, thank you very much. Um, so so Dan, I want to ask you general thoughts about hymns. Obviously, you and I are kind of looking for the the patient engagement and experience. Uh, uh, learnings, right? So to me, that's all Hims was about because that's all we were looking for and talking about. But what what are some of the general things you noticed and maybe some more specific things related to our world? Yeah, I'll tell you two things that stood out to me, Adam. One was just an increased focus on automation. They, you know, there were some vendors touting their AI capabilities, especially on the heels of chat GPT right now, a lot of discussion about generative AI. Um, but in general, we're at a point in in the tech industry where organizations are looking to apply automation. You, you consider the financial constraints so many healthcare provider organizations are dealing with right now. The more that they can automate some of the um, some of the operational and administrative tasks, I think the better for their organizations. So that was one thing that stood out. The other thing that I noticed with a lot of our patient engagement conversations with a vendor and providers is just the increased uh, capabilities and functionalities that vendors are releasing. A lot more of a platform approach uh, taking place. And I think they are really seeking to meet the needs of the organizations that are, are currently partnered with them. You know, and interestingly enough, I had a conversation just this morning with a chief operating officer at a large practice who uh, is partnered with a, a large EMR vendor. And we were talking about the patient portal experience. And, and this is a vendor that uh, we had a conversation with at HIMSS and shared a lot of the cool and innovative things that they're releasing. Um, uh, this provider had an interesting counterpoint to that, which is um, they're, they're still not investing in a platform approach at this organization. They're still looking to augment specific functionalities that they see as gaps in the portal with third-party solutions, whether that's on the intake side or the outreach or... Um, or even just communication with their yeah. patients. So that that theme's coming up in our current research. I've noticed in uh, provider perspectives on engagement technologies. Um, we're we're about halfway through that. Maybe we'll we'll save some of those learnings for the next episode. But um, a, a lot are saying, "Hey, we like the platform idea. We're using a lot with our EMR. There's a lot of other things we've got to go find." So. We'll bring some of those uh, learnings for next time. You know, you talked about chat GPT and automation. That came up uh, in my conversations as well. What I thought was interesting though, uh, you and I and Jacob and Jen attended the patient experience forum on Monday of Hims, And uh, one of the presenters talked about that. And it certainly came up in a lot of conversations to your point. Yep. But then they asked the audience, how many of your providers are doing something today with it? And, and I think maybe one hand went up, right? Out of, right. what was it, 150 in the room maybe? Um, uh, not a scientific sampling, but that was very interesting to me. Uh, lots of energy, lots of interest. Probably not a lot going on just yet. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, would it really be a hymns experience if you didn't come away with a buzzword <laughs> with a lot of energy Absolutely. and maybe not a lot of reality? <laughs> yeah. 
the bu- the buzzword bingo list is is there. So, uh, but but it comes up. I I had a call with a vendor partner this morning, and they are talking about it. It's something they're doing, and and automation makes sense. I think uh, with with the labor challenges and the economical challenges that virtually every health system is facing, it, it makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think we've both been in the industry long enough to to have seen with that where there's smoke, there's fire, even if the the yeah. real use cases haven't been proven out yet. There's enough energy and investment in the idea of chat GPT and generative AI that uh, it's only a matter of time before vendors and providers figure out the right use cases and then uh, start to deploy that. Yeah, and our hope is that it will be patient-centric, that they'll truly automate not only the the tasks for clinicians, but what else could we do for patients? Um, my latest consumerism example is the Delta Airlines app. You can do so much just chatting with a chatbot and eventually getting to a live person than I could even six months ago. Yeah. Uh, very, very helpful. So. And I noticed actually recently with Delta that they integrated that directly with um, the SMS features. So as yes, you're chatting, yes. you could do it on the plane through text messages, and oh, you wow. don't have to go to a separate app. I didn't know that one. That's pretty cool. I wanted to bring up another example. Um, so at the Patient Experience Forum, uh, Andrea Marks, the Vice President of Digital Transformation for Walmart, uh, presented and really focused on enabling care for those that don't have access or affordability. Shared some very interesting stats that I want to share with our listeners. 150 million people shop at Walmart, and they are uniquely positioned to help with food insecurities, uh, vision needs, pharmacy, over-the-counter meds, and uh, even wearables. And you, you think of how healthcare will improve. There's a few firms that are uniquely positioned like that. Walmart, Amazon, you know, we, we know some of those examples, but that was a really cool perspective to see how they're thinking of, of healthcare and digital transformation. Any, anything else that jumped out to you you want to share with our listeners? You know, I think we covered the, the main things that uh, really resonated with me at HIMSS. Always a great experience to go and see so many familiar faces. And, and it seems like more and more post-COVID that you're starting to meet people face-to-face that yeah. you uh, first encountered during the pandemic. Yeah, it's good to have those those interactions. So I, I, I'll just end with this. I agree that it felt like it was back to normal attendance, like pre-COVID times. Um, it, it feels like a strong B2B meeting, you know, that going into it, uh, getting off topic here a little bit. But, you know, we always get asked, hey, what do you think of hymns? What were the themes? So um, I thought it was a good meeting. And it's good to hopefully learn things that we can do better to help the providers and ultimately the patient. So, all right. Well, we want to thank those that helped again with, with this episode. We really appreciate their perspective. Uh, we encourage our listeners to do all you can to include the patient, make sure their voice is heard in, in engagement technology. So Dan, thanks a lot. Appreciate your insights. You're welcome. And thanks to our listeners.